In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Invoke VM script commandlet. This is a commandlet that allows you to run scripts inside your VMs and opens up a lot of really interesting possibilities because of that. In the past, uh, with PowerShell i4, we introduced this commandlet and uh, it required PowerShell to be in installed inside the guest. So, in other words, it only worked on Windows and only if you had PowerShell installed. So, we've actually changed that with update 1 you can run batch files inside of uh, Windows VMs and you can even run shell scripts inside of Linux VMs. So let's take a look at how it, how it works. So um, in my environment I've got a few XP VMs I'll be playing around with. I've also got a Red Hat uh, VM that we'll be taking a look at in a bit. So the basic operation is we get that VM, uh, we pipe it into invoke VM script and uh, some of the arguments we need to give it include a host credential which is a username and password of the host that the uh, VM is sitting on. And we also need a guest credential. Um, and I have uh, gone ahead and pre-populated this using the uh, get-credential commandlet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to run uh, dir inside of my uh, VM. Let's uh, fix the syntax to be the right thing. And um, let's see what happens. So what we find here is uh, an error that says it couldn't locate PowerShell and uh, that the operation failed. So what we can do to deal with this is go back and say uh, we'll use the uh, dash script type uh, parameter and give it a script type of bat and then try the dir command again, see what happens. Okay, now we get the, uh, the dir listing uh, from inside that guess. We could also run something like uh, IP config and get the uh, network listing uh, from within that guest. In fact, I uh, actually don't have any networking. Uh, one of the interesting things about Invoke VM Script is it allows you to you know, reach into VMs that don't have network um, working or are off the network for whatever reason. You, know, you, could, you could do something to poke this thing to get it back on the network or whatever you may need to do. Uh, so let's also take a look at my Linux VM and uh, I'm going to just change a few of these. I'm going to change that to rel1 and I'm going to change my guest credential a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of the script type and I'm just going to run ls like that. And what we see here is a directory listing from the stuff inside that Linux VM. We could also say something like uh, uh, uname-a and we get all the details of what uh, kernel version this is and so forth. Uh, we could even take this a step further. Let's say, you know, I need to do a uh, software inventory for my Linux VMs. I could pretty easily do that. I can come in and say rpm-qa. Uh, if we just run that, here's what happens. And I could even uh, take this a step further with uh, a PowerShell commandlet called uh, set variable and I could just pipe that output into a variable called RPMs. And uh, after I do that, I've got uh, all that stuff inside this RPMs variable. Uh, this is just a big uh, text string, but what I can do is actually say, you know, something like RPM list equals uh, RPMs.split, and I'll split on uh, line feeds. And the way you do that, notice there's a backtick there. Uh, that's kind of a PowerShell-ism. And uh, I've got the same data, but now it's split into um, you know, multiple entities. And I can do something like uh, contains. You know, that's kind of the, uh, the interesting thing that allows me to do is I can say dash contains, and then I, you know, whatever package I may be looking for, let's just take the one on the end here. Um, you know, so if I'm looking for something very specific, I can say, does it contain this particular package? Yes, it does. You know, I could also go in and say, um, you know, pipe it into the where commandlet and uh, use the dash like operator. Um, let's try that. Actually, I think I, what I wanted is, let's look at anything kernel related. In fact, we've got, you know, the 2618 kernel, we've got the uh, development packages, and the headers. So anyway, I, I think this, uh, you can see that this opens up really a lot of um, 
you know opportunities i think the extension to linux in particular is pretty going to be pretty useful for you know people who spend most of their time in windows uh, but occasionally they have to do some Linux uh, administration as well. This allows you to automate a lot of that stuff away.